Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about a common myth or something that I hear about quite regularly. So uh, we get asked or I see on the internet the same question and, and, and it seems to crop up everywhere. So uh, is 230 volt more efficient and uh, is 230 volt more dangerous? So I read something on the internet recently uh, where there was a discussion going on about um, how electricity can kill a person and uh, they were saying, well, most electricians are not very careful around 120 volt and they use a lot more caution around 230 volt because it's a lot more dangerous. And um, the only thing I've got to say to that is you're wrong. Um, dead wrong in fact. So uh, let's get into those topics and kind of crack these myths uh, because I'm going to tell you right up front that they are both Actually, I'm not going to tell you that yet. Let's go ahead and jump into them. All right, so let's jump into this first myth. Um, is 230 volt more efficient? So I decided to, that we'd bring a few numbers in here to kind of show you um, how this all relates. So when it comes to energy or it comes to electricity, um, when a light bulb is turned on or a motor is running, that's all considered work. Now in electricity, work is measured in watts or kilowatts. I'm sure that you've heard those terms before. When you pay your electricity bill, they are keeping track of the kilowatt hours that you use. So they're taking the number of watts that you've got at any given time, and then multiplying that by the length of time that it's in use and then they get they divide that by a thousand they get the kilowatt hours and that's what you pay to the power company so we're going to show that relationship here on the 120 volt and or uh, 115 volt and 230 volt comparison so here's the formula we've got um, your current we're going to use amps equals watts multiplied by the motor's power factor and that's going to be information that's available based on the motor. Today we're just talking about a very common motor, a Franklin Electric two-wire submersible four-inch motor, so very common motor, um, and the characteristics of this motor are completely normal. Um, so anyways, onward. So we've got a 115 volt example here, and we've got a 230 volt example here with half horsepower motor information shown. Now actually, I forgot to change this. This is uh, 1150. So if we take 10 times 115, we get 1150. So we, our current, which this is based on the pump manufacturer's nameplate information, so it's published information on the motor. Our motor's at 10 amps on a half horsepower, and that puts us at um, 10 times 115 is 1150. We multiply that by the power factor, which is also information on the motor, and we end up with uh, about 670 watts. There's two T's in watts. Uh, so about 670 watts is what we come up with running a half horse motor and 120 volt. Now we run through this whole situation over here at 230 volt. 5 times 230 is 1150. 1150 times power factor. Power factor is identical on both of these motors. And we come up with the same figure, 670 watts. And of course, watts is a snapshot at a particular given time. If we were to run each of these motors side by side for one hour, we would multiply that out for one hour of time to get us a kilowatt hour. So 670 watts times one hour equals 670 watt hour. And then we've got, uh, and we multi or divide that by a thousand, you get 0.67 kilowatts. Now, if you were up here in North Idaho, power is relatively cheap, about 10, 11 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, so running each of these motors, each one would cost you about seven cents a piece per hour. So there's clearly no advantage using 230 volt over 120 volt. Where your advantage comes from, so what I have here is a piece of wire. We all know that wire moves electricity from where it's at to where it needs to be. So in the process of doing that, 
there's resistance in these lines, regardless of if you have copper or aluminum or gold or even diamond, there's gonna be some degree of resistance. So the poorer the quality of the material for conducting, the more resistance. So resistance is essentially, you start with 120 volts here, and depending on the length of your wire, the voltage is gonna gradually drop off. So that voltage drop can be an issue because you can only, uh, uh, motors are designed and built and tested around certain voltage ranges. So the advantage to 230 volt is that since you have voltage drop that occurs, going with 230 volt essentially splits the current in half because what it all boils down to is the more voltage you have, the more current you can have going through the line. So by splitting the, the voltage and running it between two lines, 120 volt and 120 volt, which adds up to 230, or 115 and 115, since we're talking 115, that adds up to 230, so we're splitting our current in half. That's why this number is five. So you've got five on one wire, five on the other wire for a total of 10, just like in our 120 volt example, you would only have all 10 amps on that one wire. So 230 volt is advantageous when you have greater distances or you have to use a, possibly a smaller wire. Um, so there are circumstances where it is advantageous. Um, so this makes a great segue into our second myth. So I think that we can call this myth busted. Clearly, there are no efficiency advantages over 230 volt. All right, so now on to the more, is 230 volt more dangerous? Um, so if you're following along in our first uh, scenario where we determined that 230 volt is not more efficient, but it is capable of uh, cutting down the amount of current required on each leg, thus the wire is able to be more effective. You know, smaller size wire is able to be more effective over longer distances because you don't have as much current trying to go through it. Um, so how does that relate to the danger element of, of electricity? So a lot of people out there say, oh no, it's the volts that kill you. No, it's the amperage that kills you. Really what, what can cause your heart to stop or what can kill you is the current. Now current is 100% limited by the availability or by the voltage. The current is what kills you. So think of the current as all of the work that's being done, um, amperage, so forth, but it's actually the voltage that allows the current to be transported. So when you see caution 200 volts, caution 10,000 volts, um, you have a much higher potential for a higher level of current because at those high voltages, extremely high currents can be passed through there without any problems. And usually the reason that you're using um, a high voltage is because you've got a lot of current um, and you're trying to cut down on wire size and, and so forth. So without getting too in detail, it is the current that will, will cause your heart to stop and ultimately cause you to die. But uh, the voltage is the transportation method. So if I had the, an immense amount of current on this end of the wire and I only had one volt energized, you know, this was set up for one volt, that current could never get to the end and wouldn't electrocute me and, and cause me to be dead. <laughs> but uh, if I had a ton of voltage and just a small amount of current, then I would get the full brunt of that current and voltage. Um, so I hope that kind of makes sense and, and I didn't want to get too overly detailed in, in how that w works. It's just a common myth and it's a common conversation that people have as far as um, whether it's the current that kills you, whether it's the, the amperage. The bottom line is 120 volt, 230 volt, 115, whatever you want to call it, stay away from electricity because it can really mess you up. The only relatively safe electricity would be DC, um, but I would never encourage somebody without uh, a decent level of knowledge um, from touching or playing or interacting with, with uh, electricity. It's a very serious thing. Um, 
but 120 volt, 230 volt, both equally dangerous, but arguably 230 volt could be more dangerous because it has more potential to carry a greater current. All right, so that's our video today. Hope you enjoyed. Just a quick little video, wanted to knock a few myths out. I'm anxious to hear the comments on this one and maybe we'll even get a follow-up video. Um, if you guys want a more in-depth kind of scientific analysis, you know, we can work it out, no problem. I just thought we'd throw this light one out there, see if we could get the conversation started and see where it goes from here. So don't forget to like, subscribe, new videos Tuesdays and yep, Fridays. I just got a call from the head office. Um, now anyways, thanks guys for joining me. We'll see you next time.